Previously, Dr. Kirk had lured Regina, Rick, and Gale into a wide area with no exits, as the raptors pursuing them can ambush them once he had escaped through the use of a mysterious portal he'd created. The way they continue to rapidly approach them, they fear they cannot escape the tragic fate of being devoured and divided. Rick thinks to himself that it won't be long before they need to reload, and they won't have enough time for that. They continue trying to deal with the pack of raptors. They fall back while firing countless rounds and analyze the environment in hopes of finding an escape. Regina notices an air duct above them which they can use to escape with. She tells them to grapple up above. They each quickly took out their grappling guns from their waist and fired above. The barb was firmly fastened to the water pipe on the ceiling. The trio get pulled up by the tightened cables as the raptors tried reaching for their legs. Gale opens the air vent and goes first. He tells Regina to hurry up as he reaches out for her to take his hand and pull her in. She grabs his hand, but loses her grip and falls straight down where the raptors viciously await. Fortunately, the tight rope around her waist is still latched onto the pipes above her, but she's still low enough to be in danger. One of the raptors tries to attack her from behind and Regina fires at its wide open jaws, followed by pulling on the rope again to quickly pull her back up and out of danger. Rick asks her if she was injured and she replies that she's fine. The three continue to climb along the ventilation duct into a room in a separate location. Rick tells them that it's impossible for them to stay in this horrible place. They need to contact their pilot and escape while they have a chance. He looks at Gale as they move forward and says, Team leader? Gale continues looking forward and after a moment of silence he replies, Do you want to continue this action? Okay. Let's go back to the forest where we landed. After saying this, Regina gets a bit suspicious. Did she really lose her grip when she grabbed his hand back there? Or did he let go on purpose? The three of them leave the Institute, reach the control tower, and look for signs of a parachute. Anything that can point them out to Cooper's location. If something happened to him, the radio equipment he carried could be their only way out. Rick spots a parachute not too far from their location. He tells them, There it is! His parachute is just over that tree. On the other side of a, a suspended rope bridge. Of course, that's what we needed. The forest is divided by a turbulent river, and this appears to be their only way to cross. They move in, slowly. Wait, is my hand vibrating? Where's the bridge vibrating? Regina tells them, guys, look at the trees. Nobody move. Are you serious? We need to move faster, whatever's heading this way won't give us a chance. The trembling sounds continue to grow, and the three of them realize that something incredibly immense is approaching from behind the bridge. They try standing still, but with vibrations made by every step from the Tyrannosaurus Rex, the rope bridge shakes uncontrollably. This catches the attention of T-Rex, and it spots its next prey. They realize it's not working, and Gale orders them to make a run for it right away. Rick nearly fell off the bridge but grasped onto it in time. Both Gale and Regina try pulling him up, Hoping that they do not attract the attention of the T-Rex, Regina takes one look at it and notices that it's looking directly at them. The enormous jaws of the Tyrannosaurus Rex advance towards its next meal. Gale fires his weapon but causes no effect as the bridge gets mauled and lifted, tossing the three of them into the river. Regina tries swimming towards the other end of the bridge and notices that Gale was fortunate enough to cross the bridge as he was thrown closer to the other side of it. Both Regina and Rick try swimming away from the T-Rex, but it proceeds to attack once again. This time, it goes for Rick. It dives its head into the river and pulls Rick along with pieces of the bridge. To his luck, he was not bitten, but he was now even closer to the large carnivore. The T-Rex throws its head up, tossing Rick on top of its head, and without hesitation, Rick sprints down its neck, onto its back, and dives back into the river. He lands next to Regina, and before the T-Rex turns around, they both hold their breath underwater for as long as they can, as this could be their only means to avoid being eaten alive. A Tyrannosaurus Rex looks around, and after a short while, it decides to leave the area.
Rick and Regina cross the river, and Rick acknowledges that the equipment they were carrying is most likely too wet and damaged to work. Damn it. We can't even contact Gale either. We better get moving to find Cooper's communications equipment. After what we just went through, we gotta get the hell out of here before that T-Rex chases in for a rematch. She agrees. If you like this content, there are more stories based on the Resident Evil series on this channel, like Leon vs. The Deadliest Liquor, Ada Wong's Origins, The Star's Charlie Team, William Birkin vs. The Nemesis, countless additional side stories that took place before, during, and after the outbreak in Raccoon City, including more franchises for your entertainment. Take some time to browse through the archives of many playlists, such as the 10 Awesome Facts videos on Tekken, Mortal Kombat, Dragon Ball Z, and more. And now, back to the story of the Dino Crisis origins. After running ahead for a few minutes, they spot Cooper's parachute up ahead, and to their luck, Cooper's communicator is close by. It seems like it's not broken yet. Everything's working, says Rick. Regina replies, if Cooper abandoned such important equipment, he must have been attacked. We should have searched for him when we first landed. Come on, come on, hurry up, connect to the satellite! Yes! The line's connected! The transfer is in progress! We are getting out of this shit! That is no longer needed. This island will be taken over by someone else. Including the two of you. She yells at him, Gale, why did you do that? It was our only communicator! Gale replies, It's really punctual. I sold the third energy to this group. Suddenly, two unknown military helicopters arrived and were ready to land. It seems that they had planned for it. She replies, So this wasn't about the mission all along? How could you betray us? After all the years of working together as a team, what the hell was this all for, Gale? The special forces can only take you so far, and as early as I knew about this operation. The Rebel Guerrilla team had already negotiated the deal with us. The real plan was to get the third energy and retreat. But these dinosaurs were too dangerous to handle while acquiring the third energy. So I called in my new friends over to deal with the dinosaurs since clearly we require stronger firepower. The Guerrilla team leader approaches Gale and says, Good work, Gale. Just now, what you said about what's on this island are dinosaurs? Interesting. Tie them up! I need one guard watching these two. Everyone else, let's move. The members of the gorilla team are sick and militant. Knowing that they're going up against dinosaurs only sparks their interest even further. Gale thinks to himself as he watches the gorilla team heading on for the hunt that they still don't know the power of these dinosaurs. But under their leader's guidance, they might just get the job done. And this is where we end the third part of the story. For those of you who have experienced the first Dino Crisis game and completed it, you'll notice the vast differences between this Manhua story and the game's story. Differences may apply, but it does not go downhill from here. So tune in next time to see what events occur after the betrayal of their own team leader, and how they'll be getting out of this situation. That's it for the video. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button to give this video a chance to grow. I'd like to thank all my Patreon supporters for their impeccable generosity. Your support means a lot to me and you are part of the reason why I try to make the best content that I can. And if you like this content, check out the rest of my channel. You'll find more entertainment from separate franchises I like to cover such as Mortal Kombat, Dragon Ball Z, Celebrity Deathmatch, Men in Black, The Mask, Batman Comics, The Terminator, TMNT, Dino Crisis, Resident Evil, and more. If you're a Patreon supporter, check out my exclusive videos such as the Gantz content. And if you'd like to show your support, go to my Patreon and support the channel, which is only a dollar. Sacrifice that McChicken for extra quality content, my friend. But anyways, I'll see you all in the next video, and remember to have an awesome day.